We are at the Branson Gospel Music Convention. Sitting with me tonight is Kenny Bishop. And Kenny, we want to welcome you to Gospel Music Today. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's a pleasure for me to be able to be here after watching for so long. To be able to be in this chair is really nice. Well, that is nice to hear. Now, I, sometimes I will ask people uh, how they got involved in Southern Gospel singing. I guess I really don't have to ask you that. But uh, give me a little bit of the background with the Bishop family and everything. Sure. Well, you know, we're, we're a singing family. As far back as I can remember, we've always sang pretty much every opportunity, pretty much mostly on our front porch back home in Kentucky and in the car on the way to church and on the way home from church and that sort of thing. And it, we were never really taught how to sing, how to harmonize and all of those things. It just sort of you know, fell into place with, with all the parts. Uh, but we would sing in our local church and a few churches around close to us, you know, and like every other singer, it's like the, uh, or every other group, the circle just gets a little larger and a little larger. And before you know it, you're pretty much singing from coast to coast and in other countries and, and those sorts of things. So, um, you know, we were able to, uh, we were very blessed to be able to enjoy that growth, enjoy the blessings and to be able to travel and, and to be a part of a lot of large events and, and large festivals and concerts and churches and things like that. So, you know, God just, um, one of the things we found out is if, if you will be faithful where you are and God is ready to move you to another place, then he'll do just that. And we just always wanted to be faithful where we were. Mm -hmm. Now, when the bishops as a, as a family group came off the road, and it was a, a transition where we didn't hear from Kenny Bishop and uh, now we're, you're back again, which is great to hear you singing. Uh, what brought you back? You know, it, it's really a sort of an interesting story. When, um, when the bishops retired and came off the road, I, I'll back up just a little bit because before, while we were still traveling and singing, although singing and music was my job, my career, I was also involved a little bit in political work. I had a small, very local political uh, consulting little office that I kept and worked with local candidates, that sort of thing. Um, and so when the group came off the road and we retired, I went to work for uh, our congressman, uh, U.S. congressman there in Kentucky, in central Kentucky. Uh, and then about a year and a half after I went to work with him there, he ran for governor of Kentucky and was elected governor, and I went to work with him in his administration, in his office. I was actually the executive director of the governor's mansion uh, during Governor Fletcher's term. Uh, then when he left office, I went to work for the... Uh, the Senate President and the Speaker of the House in Kentucky. So I've kind of, you know, gotten very involved in all of those things. But while I was working with, with for Governor Fletcher and was Executive Director of the Governor's Mansion, there were a lot of nights that I worked very late. The job just required a lot of long hours and late hours. Uh, and during a lot of those nights, when I would be in my office working, the governor would come in from his office and he would come into my office and just sit. I had the most comfortable chair in all the governor's mansion in my <laughs> office. And he would come and just sit to visit and we would talk about things that weren't really important because we'd both, especially him, had talked about important things all day. Yeah. Um, but one night he came into my office and uh, just out of the blue, he said, Kenny, you know, Glenn and I have been talking, his, that was his wife, he said, Glenn and I have been talking, we've been thinking, we've been praying, and we really feel like you have a story to tell. We feel like you still have songs to sing, and there are people who still need to hear about and know about the mercy of God and the grace of God. And so he said, we just want to encourage you. We don't want you to think that we would keep you here when you have that work to do. Of course, my first response was, Governor, that's about the sweetest way I could ever be fired. <laughs> you know, uh, but he said, you know, that's not what we want. We want you to be here, but we don't want you to feel like you can't go and sing and share. Now, up until that point, I had never given it serious thought. I was really consumed with the work I was doing in the administration there. And so just didn't really feel like I had time to, to pursue it or even do it as a hobby. Uh, but I told him just to sort of end the conversation that night, I said, you know, Governor, um, if the door ever opens and the opportunity ever shows up, then I'll seriously consider it. It was within a couple of days that I got a call from Daywind Records in Nashville, and one of their artists, one of their male solo artists, had just put a group together, and they were looking for a male solo artist. And uh, I felt like it was more than a coincidence yeah. that the governor would say what he said and then I would get that phone call and I made it as tough a choice as possible. As a matter of fact, when I met with the record company, I told them exactly what I wanted to do and I wasn't sure they'd be on board with it. And if they weren't, that'd be okay. That means God didn't want me to, <laughs> to do it, you know. Uh, but they were on board. I told them, I said, I want to record a record that just, that it, 
it brags about the mercy of God, talks about the grace of God, just compels people about the goodness of God. I want my job to be to make to make the Lord look and sound and smell and feel and taste so good that people don't want to not have him. They don't want to not experience him. And so um, that's sort of been my mission. And after several years of just kind of hiding out in Washington, D.C. and at the state capitol in Kentucky, uh, after encouragement from the governor and a lot of friends, you know, I'm back out and about doing this, although not exclusively. I'm still at the state capitol in Kentucky. That's great. Now, after all, after growing up and singing all those years with, with the family, now it's Kenny Bishop out on stage on that platform all by yourself. Was that a tough transition? Well, it was tough because there's nobody to argue with, <laughs> you know? I mean, you, you, and there's nobody else to blame. <laughs> you know, if something doesn't work, you know, you're, you're pretty much it. It probably would have been a remarkably tough transition had I gone directly from the stage with my family directly into solo work. And I've thought about that often with my brother Mark, you know, who still continues to write and sing and is just enjoying wonderful successes. I've thought a lot about, you know, he didn't have the transition that I had. He didn't have the time to kind of get used to not being out there. He went immediately into solo work when the group came off the road. But with me, it's been okay. I'll be honest, there are times that I really, really miss being able to harmonize mm -hmm. with people. I mean, you can you can harmonize with your soundtracks all you want, but they're not going to, if you feel like changing a, uh, you know, the way you pronounce something or the way that you would... Uh, uh, just work a song. You can't do it. You're pretty much married to your soundtracks. Uh, so I do miss that a lot. Have you been recording? You know what? I've been doing a lot of writing lately and a lot of writing preparing for a recording, but I haven't scheduled time to get in the studio to do it just yet. And usually when I think I've got pretty much all the material that I, that I want to put a record together, I'll get a call from another artist or a group who's looking for a song, and so I'll send them one of those. Yeah. So I'm probably down to where I have about half a record now, okay. so I need to write some more. All right. We'll be waiting for it. Uh, Kenny Bishop website. It's KennyBishop.com. Very, very simple. I was fortunate. You know what? Back about, oh, it's been quite a few years ago when the Internet was still fairly fresh to a lot of people. A uh, young lady who used to come hear the bishops sing all the time on the road for my birthday one year came to me and gave me a certificate, and she said, you now own KennyBishop.com. And so I've had it ever since. All right. Nice to be prepared. It is. <laughs> Kenny, thank you very much for talking to us on Gospel Music Today. Thank you. My pleasure. There's more coming up on Gospel Music Today. Thank you very much. Where, where's the